Amendment number 13 in the names of Deputy Clare Daly and Maureen O'Sullivan. Arises at the committee proceedings. 13 and 14 are related and will be discussed together. Uh, um, Deputy Clare Daly to move. Yeah. You want the two together, Count Well, you, you, move the, you move this one first. Move the 13 first. We, yeah. yeah. And the Minister come back up. Yeah. yeah. Okay. They'll be voted on together. And discuss together and, and put separately. Right, right, okay. Well, look, just just on 13, so I mean... You, you move, you're moving the 13. Moving 13, yeah. And uh, I think this is probably, um, in many ways, the most important amendment that we have tabled as part of this bill. And it's one has, that has got the uh, most attention because it is a huge step forward that we have such a comprehensive animal health and welfare bill being put through the House here today. I think all of us would agree that a lot of its provisions are going to represent a substantial step forward in terms of animal welfare in this state. And it's against that backdrop that the very fact that the practice of hair coursing is being excluded from the protections of this bill is just such an absolute gaping anomaly. It's a contradiction. In essence, what we're doing is recognising that the practice itself is inherently cruel, but then we are allowing it to continue. And I think we have to say that this is something which Ireland is now one of the last remaining countries in the world to allow the practice of hair coursing. It's been banned in England, Scotland, Wales, most recently in uh, Northern Ireland. And it is something which I and a majority of Irish citizens consistently in opinion polls believe is an outdated practice which has no part in a, a modern Ireland. And that's not just an opinion. It's actually been verified by the facts that are taking place on the ground, where participation in coursing clubs is dramatically declining over the past number of years. And as each season happens, in actual fact, the numbers involved are getting less and less. Census figures released in 1935 revealed that there were over 219 coursing clubs in Ireland. Today, there's less than uh, 90. And that uh, amount is, is continually in decline. It is uh, a practice which is carried out maybe in about 10 counties in Ireland. The only part in Dublin where it's actually carried out is in my own constituency, uh, but nonetheless I think it is something uh, which uh, has no part. And I think information which was circulated to all of us over the past period, which shown that drag coursing and a very successful drag coursing event took place, negates any argument which used to traditionally be put forward that oh you're losing uh, an interest in this sport people who love greyhounds don't get a chance to exercise and compete with their dogs that argument is an absolute nonsense we do not need hair coursing to continue for dogs to be exercised or to compete in this manner and successful drag coursing events in Ireland have actually proved uh, that circumstance and negate that argument and I, I think that is something that the Minister Minister has to take on board. In actual fact, it would do far better for our tourism to not have this bar barbarity continuing uh, and to, to replace it with the uh, form of drag coursing rather than uh, it being uh, a negative. I think we've heard an awful lot uh, over the years about to justify uh, hair coursing. Uh, ridiculous arguments in my mind, all of which can be defeated. Uh, nonsense like, oh, well, sure, look, at the hairs are being looked after and they're being protected, and that's what the coursing clubs do. Let's be clear here. These animals are picked up, snatched from their environment, kept to be chased by dogs, sustain massive injuries, which I'm not going to read into the record because we've done it before, in coursing events uh, around the country. They do not uh, enjoy it. Um, and the fact that the organisers don't plan the death, that it's just an unfortunate byproduct, uh, is not really uh, a reason for it to continue. I don't accept the arguments that it's a traditional uh, sport in Ireland. It actually came in from uh, the British garrisons, actually introduced the sport, wrong name there, but uh, introduced it into Ireland. So it's not a traditional Irish activity. And just because something is traditional doesn't mean that it's acceptable. 
standards in society move on and things which were the norm before uh, become unacceptable as time moves on. I mean, previous societies used to have freak shows when they paraded people uh, with disabilities and people who look different in the so-called name of entertainment. Such events now would be absolutely reprehensible. Similarly, wanton cruelty uh, such as cockfighting or bear baiting, which went on uh, 100 years ago and passed for sport, is not something that anybody now would deem to be uh, an acceptable behaviour. And I think you know, it's quite clear all of the evidence shows this isn't a natural activity for hares. They don't enjoy being chased. They are a gentle animal who actually uh, are under threat in Ireland now, and the numbers uh, would show that they are in decline as a result of uh, this activity uh, going on. So it's not uh, acceptable that this would uh, continue. As I say, successive opinion polls would um, prove that this is not a minority viewpoint, and I really am surprised that the Minister has continued with this cruel practice and excluded it from the protection of the legislation because, to be honest, it is the one uh, gaping anomaly from your legislation which I think that most citizens uh, do not accept. And I would, even at this late stage, appeal to you to accept our amendment and allow us to move on, allow us to develop the activity and the course in clubs where there's no cruelty been engaged in. Uh, and in actual fact, many people who consciously stay away might then go along and actually support the activities. And uh, it might, in that sense, um, uh, further um, develop it. Uh, so we don't see it in any way as being an attack on the uh, rural climates. A lot of the majority of people in the rural areas oppose hair coursing as well. And I'd ask you to uh, support the amendment based on that. Uh, Deputy Maureen O'Sullivan. Thank you. Um, well, first of all, I'm absolutely appalled that in the previous vote that there are only 14 people in this chamber out of the 120 today who are in favour of banning fur farming. That's the, the first one. Um, the second point, I think among animal welfare circles, when it was known that you were working on this bill, there was a great sense that finally we were going to do what is right by animals in this country and that those cruel practices of like coursing and like the gassing of Meg and the badger culling etc would finally be eradicated. And I want to go back to you know, the opening of, of your bill minister on page seven you know, in the introduction. I mean, it's very, very definitely stated there to prevent cruelty to animals. And I also note on, you know, looking at um, the also under animal welfare on part three on page 13, you know, you want to ensure that the animal is treated in a manner that safeguards the health and welfare of the animal and does not threaten the health or welfare of the animal or another animal. Now, nobody will tell me that coursing is part of that sort of activity where the welfare of the animal is at stake and where there is no cruelty. And I just came across a, an interesting quotation from a German philosopher, Immanuel Kant, saying that he who is cruel to animals becomes hard also in his dealings with men. We can judge the heart of a man by his treatment of animals. And I think Irish men are not coming across very well when we look at the way in which animals have been treated in this country. Um, I don't think it's doing, if we care about it, our international reputation any good um, by being one of three countries that continue with, with live coursing. I understand that the gathering has also taken down hunting from its website. And we do see, as Deputy Daly was saying, the decreasing numbers. I mean, this was a golden opportunity to get rid of hair coursing, which I think it's very obvious that the majority of people in this country totally oppose. And I know deputies are annoyed by the extent of the email that is coming in on this matter, but I think it just shows the extent of the support for putting a ban on coursing. Um, you know, we look at the greyhound also, and I think damage is being done to the greyhounds because they also are a gentle animal, but yet they are being blooded deliberately to do something that is against their nature. We know also the damage to the hares, the way in which they are netted, the way in which they are kept, and the way in which they are used, and also increasing use of rabbits in this, this, um, this also. Greyhounds have suffered injuries as well because of the way in which the, the muzzle on them and their frustration. And as I said to a committee, there's no way I'm suggesting that the muzzle should come off, but I'm just saying that this is unnatural to, you know, to the greyhound also. I think when you were at the committee, you were mentioning also about the industry and employment and etc. But that can also be available if drag coursing is brought in. And I really, like Deputy Daly, hope that you can consider that. 
I also make the point that coursing clubs, uh, coursing events monitored by coursing clubs, I really don't think that that is an adequate um, supervision and inspection. The hares we know are injured and they are mauled and they, some of them have been killed either during the coursing or after the coursing. There's also the fact that the hare is a subspecies of the mountain hare in this, in, on this island. And, you know, and if we continue as we are, there are going to be dangers to it. So we could be coming back here that this is an endangered species and we have to do something else on it. Um, you know, I think that my predecessor, the late Tony Gregory, tried to bring a ban on coursing in back in the early 90s, and um, he didn't succeed. And here we are now, what are we, more than nearly 30 years later, and we're in the same situation. This is a cruel practice, Minister, and if you are concerned about animal welfare, you will reconsider this. But I do know that neither Deputy Daly nor I are giving up the fight on this one. Thank you, Deputy. Uh, the next speaker, Deputy Pat Nolte. Well, thank you very much, Chair, and again, I'm very happy to support this amendment. Um, I think, Minister, you, you, we had a debate at the last amendment about, about language, but I don't really think there can be much debate in relation to this amendment. Hair coursing is deliberately cruel. It's deliberately unnecessary. As Deputy O'Sullivan has outlined, issues around employment can be addressed in other ways through dry coursing. But it really sticks out like a sore thumb in this bill that the opportunity to ban it is not being seized. And I really wonder why it's not being seized. I found it very ironic that in, in our last vote, Fine Gael, Fianna Fáil and Sinn Féin all stood shoulder to shoulder. I think not since before 1918 have the Nationalist parties not stood together so much to oppose um, progressive measures towards achieving animal rights. And I think this is an opportunity to redeem yourself, Minister. There are positive elements of your bill, and I want to acknowledge that. But this is a huge anomaly, and it is a huge failure of us seizing political responsibility and responsibility for the environment in which we all live on this, on this island, and to ban hair coursing. It's a totally barbaric and unacceptable practice. It's totally unnecessary, and it certainly doesn't represent the future of, of Irish economic and rural development and I think we should ban it outright today and I support the amendment. Thank you Deputy. Deputy McGrath. Good to um, I want to come in and say in support of the Minister and to speak against this amendment and <coughs> to say that I come from a county that have a proud record and with coursing clubs and uh, coursing is to be part of our heritage and indeed our, our culture and it's fine to hear deputies saying that we can we'll lose jobs here, but we can create other jobs. We find it uh, quite difficult to create jobs as it is now. And the jobs that are involved uh, with the coursing and greyhound industry in Tiberi certainly are indigenous jobs of the people, by the people, their own uh, uh, money, their own initiative, their own kilns, their own breedings, breed, uh, 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 money invested in breeding, and the, the, the way they nurture uh, the greyhound and the greyhound industry. And uh, we had a very successful festival as so long ago in Clonmel in February, which I've asked uh, numerous occasions. I just put it on the record again today, Deputy Daly and Deputy Solomon to come down and look at it. Uh, what did I say before? There's none so blind who don't want to see. Come down and see how humane that's become and the kind of an industry it is and how, 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 how valuable it is to the county. And tourism, and I'm uh, only today I learned that if hunting is taken off the gathering, if it is, it's, it's more on two eh? It's more the pity. I don't know whether it is or not, but I, 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 I think it's, 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 it's part of our, our natural uh, being, our natural heritage that people hunt and fish and, and do coursing. And I am shocked, kind of shocked, with Deputy O'Sullivan saying that she's appalled at the vote some time ago, or the last vote, the numbers. I think we're living in a democracy, thankfully, surely, and we're entitled to vote. And if, the, if there's such a demand has been quoted by my two colleagues uh, according to opinion polls, that it's, everybody wants to ban this. Why haven't there 120, why haven't there 100 TDs elected in here so, by those same people? Uh, but the, 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 and uh, talked about the emails. The email is a concerted, organized, contrived campaign. Silly campaign as far as I'm concerned, but um, same people that, you know, that came to my county, and I said this before here as well, shortly before the coursing meeting time a couple of years ago, when the hares were in a compound, and cut the wire and allowed the hares out onto the motorway and got slaughtered on the motorway in the name of animal rights. Slaughtered. 
pulverised into the into the into into the into the surface of the of the motorway. How more uncaring, un, unselfish, and, and, and for animals could those people have been? And they tell you they're for animal rights. The same people who some time ago again, uh, a good few years ago, passed, put broken glass on the greyhound tracks, and then they talk about uh, minding the delicate greyhounds, and they put broken glass, broken glass, and they shifted it into the ground of the track. So they were unmerciful damage to the feet of those uh, uh, greyhounds. So these people need to get real and stop the bully tactics. We're entitled to our indigenous industry. We're entitled to carry out uh, and, and participate in our sports. And more importantly, when it creates an industry. Same with the hunting, as I said, because everybody that has an egg or a foal or a male has to have a, a stable, has to have a veterinarian, has to have tackle, and has to have a horse box and something to pull it. So we're generating an industry in our own right. Just leave us alone. If it doesn't suit the people in the pale, fine. If it's supposed to come in here from the, from the garrison towns or whatever um, ideas these people have, it's tough. It's something that we adopted. Everything British isn't bad. So if we did adopt it, fine. People have got lots of enjoyment out of it. Lots of jobs are being created out of it. We have an industry worth at least six million to the town of Clanmel. I know the minister was intending to come, and I asked him on committee, and he wasn't able to make it this year, but I know his late colleague, um, Minister McEntee, did, did come a year ago. Year, year last February, God rest them, and um, saw the benefit of it. So we can't live in, all live in glass houses and just say we can stop this. These are the same people are looking for jobs here and jobs there. It's not so easy to create jobs. We had a flourishing industry used to have in South Tipperary in the greyhound industry. Not half as flourishing now as it was, but it's, there's still a good residue of people employed and there's a good residue of, of uh, spending and spend around this industry. So let's accept the democracy. Let's accept the vote, and I don't know what the next vote is going to be. It's none of my business. I can only count my own vote and count my own people in Tipperary. But to say that we're horrified because people, only 14 people voted against um, the, the closing of four, uh, four factories, again creating valuable industry in, in certain parts of the country. So let's get real. We can't, on the one hand, be screaming for jobs and screaming for um, um, uh, more industry and, more, and, and try uh, with our eyes closed, on the other hand, banish an indigenous, an indigenous industry that's, I said, of the people, by the people, and for the people. And with more of that, we wouldn't have half the unemployment we have. We wouldn't have half it. And, and um, so it just uh, sticks a bit in my crowd that the effort, and I have no problem that it's just entitled to make the effort and continue the effort. But as I said, when he sat moaning about 100, uh, only 14 voting one way and 100 vote the other way or whatever, that's where I have the problem. Is it democracy or not? Are we going to be uh, led by so called opinion polls that? Uh, suggest that, as has been quoted here by recent speakers, that uh, opinion polls overwhelmingly say that courting should be banned. So why don't you reflect that in the ballot box when the last election and the next election? So, I mean, we have to come into the real world and uh, deal with this in reality. Allow the people out there, goodness knows they're burdened enough and they have enough pressure on them. If they want to enjoy their sport, if they want to uh, breed and, and feed and rear and look after them every way in the most caring ways, their greyhound dogs and their, anim and their horses and everything else, if they want to generate an industry for themselves and their families and jobs for themselves and their families, are we going to stop them? Are we going to say because of some idealists that um, this is cruel? And some of the same people that are anti this, and I said this before and I hate going back to it, anti blood sport but totally pro abortion and that's one thing I cannot get into my little head at all, how anyone can be in that uh, frame of mind. And that debate is coming down the tracks again, but it's done unashamedly. Pro-abortion, anti-blood sport. I risk my case. Thank you. Thank you, um, Minister. No further speakers. Look, um, I recognise that, that there are very strong views on this issue, uh, um, and, um, and that for some people, uh, hair coursing is uh, totally unacceptable cruel practice. Uh, and for others, it's not. In fact, it's part of their, their parish, uh, it's part of their club, uh, it's part of their upbringing um, um, uh, in terms of growing up with, uh, with greyhounds uh, uh, and so on. Uh, and so there is, a, there is a balance that I have to strike as a minister in terms of what we do with this bill. Uh, and you know, I think it is important uh, to read into the record uh, for, for people who may have never been to a coursing meeting, and I haven't been to a coursing meeting, I have to say, um, but, but for others who haven't, um, that um, veterinary staff from my department 
and rangers from national parks and wildlife services uh, uh, do carry out random monitoring inspections during the course of uh, a coursing season to verify compliance with licenses and rules governing animal welfare. And I think everybody, even people who would like coursing to be banned, uh, would probably recognise that actually over the last 10 years or so, uh, we have moved uh, significantly towards uh, clearer rules and regulations in terms of uh, adherence to uh, um, uh, to standards and linking that to the licensing of, of hair coursing. Uh, as a further control, a monitoring committee on coursing was established during the 1993-94 um, coursing season and is comprised of officials from my department and representatives from both National Parks and Wildlife and uh, the Irish Coursing Club uh, to, monitor uh, to monitor developments in coursing and in, regard to the situ uh, and in that regard, the situation is kept under constant review to ensure that coursing is run in a well-controlled and responsible manner in the interests of both hares and greyhounds alike. And I think it is also important to say, because I think some people seem to assume that there is a, a, a very significant mortality rate in terms of hares that are used for coursing. A very high proportion of hares captured for hare coursing uh, are returned back into the wild. In fact, in the 2011-2012 season, 97.3% of hares that were caught for coursing will return back into the wild. Yeah. So, so, so like, these are the facts. That, that doesn't mean that, that I'm attempting to convince deputies here who are uh, um, adamant that this should be banned. Uh, I can understand that concern, uh, but I have to uh, legislate in a way that is balanced and fair, uh, and, uh, and I think we're doing that. And, and uh, unfortunately, I can't accept uh, the amendments that the deputy is proposing. De deputy uh, Daly, yeah? Just a couple of things, Kim Corla. Um, I think the Minister makes the point that hair coursing is, is part of people's upbringing and their club history and so on. The point that we strongly are making here is that the success of the greyhound industry and the continuance of coursing clubs does not depend on killing, hunting or maiming hares for their survival. It's simply not the case that that is true. People who want to continue with these clubs, who want to exercise their dogs, and I know that many of them uh, love their dogs, do not require thousands of hares to be netted, reefed from the countryside, used as live lure for greyhounds, uh, being kept in captivity for weeks, trained to run up a field, and then released for pairs of dogs to chase after them. And the fact that some of them only get maimed and get a broken leg or experience trauma and then are released back is not really a justification for that. Now, it is the case that you, uh, and as a result of um, attitude changes and campaigning efforts by animal rights and animal welfare activists, that changes in this area have been brought in, not least because of the efforts of, of Tony Gregory and some of our other predecessors to deal with this. And the fact that dogs are now muzzled has obviously reduced the deaths, but it hasn't eliminated it. And yes, it's true that you have vets there and you have uh, national parks and wildlife staff, but I would put it to you, against the backdrop of the need that your bill will now put on those resources to monitor and care for other animals because of extra provisions that you've put in in other areas, would it not be better that their time was not wasted by having to go to hair coursing events, that they could concentrate on meaningful jobs where they could really protect the welfare of animals in different uh, circumstances? Because while it may be true that there, not all of the hares who participate die, we know that, there is not a coursing event that takes place that no hare doesn't die. And we have a catalogue from uh, the Freedom of Information released into the activity and information from the National Parks and Wildlife Service into uh, coursing activities and their reports, which list, I, I mean, we'd be here all day listing it, but uh, instances like, for example, in uh, Clare Castle and Ennis in 2011, early 2012, five hares were hit, three died in the escape after coursing, day two, seven hares hit, two killed, four injuries, eight fatalities. Other areas uh, in Wexford, 12 hares unfit for coursing, 86 hares captured, a number of them missing, 10 hares hit in Thurlis, two killed, two injured, two died. You're over your time. 
There's no time limit two, on this. Two minutes for this round. Two minutes. There's no time limit on this. On the first round. It was Absolutely not. Since when? We never. There's no guillotine on this. We have two opportunities to speak. Yes. On each amendment, our group of amendments. Yeah, but second second the contribution shall, shall not exceed two minutes. That's the standard. Okay. Order. It's just earlier the Cahirlock was here who said movers could speak three times. Yeah. Yes, you can. Yeah, that's true. You can. Right. You can okay. speak again. So if I stop in, now and then I can finish my yeah. points. Yes. The next yes. time I come yes. back, okay. I would have done it in one go. So, okay. okay. Uh, you saw you have it. You, ha you can come in on the next round. We can come in on the next round okay. as well. But yeah, okay. We're going to just finish. Very, right, in, right. literally in two seconds, finish that point. That staff are tied up in this issue. You know, we'd be quite happy to leave uh, Deputy McGrath in uh, Thurlis or Clonmair, wherever he is, very happy uh, to leave them there if he was only damaging himself and his neighbours and they were only damaging each other. But uh, sadly, the activity doesn't do that and there has to be a, a voice speaking okay. out on that. Thank you, Deputy. Um, Deputy Maureen O'Sullivan, you have two minutes, Deputy. Yeah, I, I won't take the two minutes. There's no point repeating you know, the figures that, that Deputy Daly was starting to give there. But I have to say, I, you cannot say that the previous vote and the next one is a victory for democracy. What it is, it's a victory for a party system that vested interests are want to maintain these particular industries. So it's not a democratic. I'm totally committed to democracy, but that was not an exercise in democracy. What we're talking about here is deliberate cruelty. I'm not against what happens in the countryside, in the natural course of things with animals. You know, with a name like O'Sullivan, I have very, very strong co uh, rural connections. So I can accept what happens, you know, by the natural course, in, in, in that natural order in the countryside. But this is deliberate cruelty. You'd almost feel like saying, well, look, if a hare has survived once, he should get a big X on his back so he doesn't have to go into the ring again and face the greyhounds the next time. You know, it is a cruel practice, Minister. We will keep going on this one. Thank you, Deputy. Well, I've, I mean, we've had a long discussion on this in, in committee, and uh, I think, I think my views are, you know, are um, are pretty well known on this. I, I can understand the uh, the alternative view, and it's made very well by the deputies here. Um, but I um, um, I think we're taking a balanced approach, um, um, and um, and we don't propose to ban hair coursing in this legislation. Okay. Deputy Daly, you have two minutes. Two. Sorry. <laughs> you're unlimited, I'm told, in this. I'm unlimited now, for heaven's sake, right? You are, you are, if you'd let me speak the first time, I wouldn't have even... You're the mover of the motion replying. You both are. Right. So OK, that's well... What, and that's what the standing order says. OK, well, look, I, I, I won't go unlimited on this, but look, there are hugely important issues on this. And the point about the previous uh, vote is absolutely to say there is no way that there's only 14 deputies in this house who are opposed to hair courts to uh, for affirming the next vote will probably be something similar there is no way we know from speaking to the deputies from all of the parties who voted against our amendment that that is not their personal viewpoint and you know i doubt very much that there are many people who choose to vote for a candidate based on what their attitude is to hair coursing or to general animal welfare issues. It may be a factor with some people. It's not the most decisive factor with others. So uh, I, I, I don't think that's an argument that absolutely uh, stands up. This is uh, to reflect the fact that Irish society, and we know this as a fact because an, only a very small number of people participate in this activity. Now, we are all for individual freedoms and supporting individual rights and so on, and that would be fine as long as no harm was being done. But harm is being done here, and deliberate barbaric cruelty that serves no purpose and does not offer a single job. It is absolute nonsense. Deputy McGrath possibly didn't hear correctly because we didn't say that any jobs would be lost as a result of this. In actual fact, there has been no scientific evidence ever put forward to say that a ban on hair coursing would diminish the jobs in that area. It would be a far more valid argument to say that the more humane and acceptable alternative 
of drag coursing could actually lead to more jobs being created in that industry, to maybe the majority of counties beginning to look at this area, beginning to experience it or whatever, if it is that great. I don't think that will necessarily happen, but there's certainly no evidence to say that jobs will be affected in uh, this way. And I don't accept that this is about idealism or anything like that. It's about a civilised society moving on, uh, recognising the fact that inherently cruel practices which are not, don't occur in the wilds, don't occur naturally, are put forward in the name of sport, in the name of entertainment, is absolutely unacceptable. Uh, and I do think, uh, and I will say that assuming that uh, you don't hear our pleas this time uh, around, Minister, we will be back with a private member's bill on this, with other legislation, because there is no way that we can allow this uh, to continue, and I, I, that will be in the lifetime of this government. We'll be discussing these uh, issues again. Thank you, Deputy. So I, I now put the question that the words proposed to be deleted stand. The deputies in favour say it. Paul. That the words proposed to be deleted stand. So those in favour say it. Members wishing to defeat the amendment say it. Those who wishing to defeat the amendment will say it. And those against? Neil. So um, I think the question has been um, carried and the, the, the amendment is lost. Both are, okay. Thank you. Could you please take your seats. Item number 30, Annual Health and Welfare Bill, 2012 Report Stage. Amendment number 13, in the name of Deputies uh, Claire Daly and Maureen O'Sullivan. The question is that the words proposed to be deleted stand, and on that question a division has been challenged. Tell us all, Deputies Paul Cho and Emmett Stagg. Tell us near Deputies Claire Daly and Maureen O'Sullivan. Uh, Thor 102, Neil 13. Uh, the words proposed, proposed to be deleted stand. The question is carried and the amendment is lost. Thank you. Thanks, 